Welcome to the Industrial Talk Podcast with Scott McKenzie. Scott is a passionate industry professional dedicated to transferring cutting-edge, industry-focused innovations and trends while highlighting the men and women who keep the world moving. So put on your hard hat, grab your work boots, and let's go. Well, hi there. Welcome to the Industrial Talk Podcast. I am so glad that you are here. Thank you very much for joining. We've got an incredible interview with a gentleman by the name of Ted Miller the third, with that little three right there. And we're going to talk a little bit about uh, training, mastery, and increasing sales for you, the industrial professional, the bottom line. That's what we're here about. That's what we're passionate about. So let's go and let's start into the Industrial Talk podcast. Thank you very much for joining. Yeah, I'm excited about this one. This is going to be a great interview. I am. I, Ted is a man of action, no doubt about it. When we first started to connect, he just said, yeah, let's do it. And then, of course, he sent me a book right there, The Ultimate Sales Machine, Chet Holmes. Incredible. But anyway, he is phenomenal, passionate about what he does. And, and without a doubt, I am and you are going to be just excited about this particular interview. But before we get going, we always have to be safe and we always got to talk about tailgate talk number one. Okay, you've been talk, uh, hearing me talk a lot about reliabilityweb.com, and I want to make sure that you understand, if you're a reliability professional, an asset management professional, you need to go to reliabilityweb.com. They are the leaders. They are the thought leaders when it comes to reliability and asset management, bar none. You've got to go there. Incredible professionals, incredible people dedicated to your success as a reliability leader, okay? Okay. So you need to go out to reliabilityweb.com, find out more, great website, incredible activities going out there. You need training? It's there. You need to go to a conference that is just second to none? Go there to the events. You'll find it. All It's all there. It's, they're fantastic people. So that's reliabilityweb.com. Number two. Go to, uh, to industrialtalk.com. Find the Industrial Academy. There you will find uh, also training because we're all about the training. You can't take the training away, right? We're all about the content and providing that information that is specific to you, the industrial professional, the companies that uh, need to expand their market. That's where you're going to find it, the Industrial Academy. This is where I highlight not just only the stuff that I'm passionate about, which is marketing, branding, sales, leadership, but you're also going to find out things about finance, industrial finance, technology, it goes on and on. So go to the Industrial Academy, uh, which is at the industrialtalk.com location. Number three. And then finally, here we go. I'm, uh, this is something that I started out, Industrial Groundbreakers. This is a Facebook group that's out there, and it is there to bring together the leaders of industry with young, uh, aspiring industrial professionals who want to get and connect it and learn as much as they possibly can about their new profession, and that is the industrial uh, market. So that is just the Industrial Groundbreakers. It's free. Join it. Connect. I do Facebook Lives, and we just uh, we really start talking a lot about digital marketing and uh, things like that. Okay, on to the interview right now. So, what makes this this conversation so great is the fact that Ted Miller the third he is really passionate about getting new clients. That's what we're about: getting new clients via educational based marketing. Right. You've got to, without a doubt, after listening to this particular interview, you've got to take action. He is a man of action. He is a man of uh, extreme focus on what is really beneficial to you as a, a professional as well as a company, an industrial company. It was just an, a, a wonderful conversation, and he is truly in his heart, and he lives it, breathes it, and eats it. He's an entrepreneur, and he has his best interest is your success. So I, I don't do it justice. It was a fantastic interview. You've just got to just sit there, take notes, because uh, it, it's just full of just incredible education. And then you can reach out. He is very responsive. He doesn't just sort of sit there and blah, blah, blah and talk about it. He is responsive, and I'm telling you right now, You'll be better off because of that. So once again, here he is. This is Ted Miller III. He is the founder of Training Mastery 3. And uh, 
at the end of this uh, podcast, we're going to give you all, and I mean all of his uh, uh, contact information so that you have no excuse not to get a hold of him. So once again, here you go. This is Ted Miller. I am proud to have him on the Industrial Talk podcast. Enjoy the conversation. All right, I'm talking to Ted Miller. He's with Training Mastery 3, and I'm so glad that you're on uh, the Industrial Talk podcast, Ted. I, I can't believe it because, man, I'll tell you, you contacted me. You turned that doggone document around real quick, and we're on. We're doing a podcast. I appreciate we're here. That. We're ready to rock and roll. I mean, like, there's no time to waste, so just it. get her done. Yeah, and, and in your little uh, list here that I've got, if you're out there on the YouTube channel, I've got this uh, list that he filled out, and one of the things that uh, he likes to do things fast which is yes. a, that's pretty cool. I, I mean, we're, we're symbiotical when it comes to that. Symbiotical, is that a word? Symbiotic. No, you, can, you can make that symbiotic up. Symbiotic is, but not autical. I'll use it so that way you're not <laughs> alone on that topic. And then you could say, well, I heard it from him. It's mine. Put it on a bumper sticker and I own it. Welcome to the digital marketing world. All right. I got to ask the question because we got to humanize you a little bit because nobody really knows who you are within the industrial market. Let's talk a little bit about what you do, right, for your free time. What do you like? Free time. Free time. Well, you mentioned speed. If, if I had my druthers, I would be going fast physically. I would be on the racetrack. Uh, you know, all these tree-hugging hippies out here on the West Coast when I moved out of Chicago, went out to Oregon. Oregon. Now it's Oregon. I've been here 17 years. The mountain biking. So, like, whipping through trees and that could kill you. So, anything that can put my life in the line. Something about that adrenaline allows me to feel present in the moment and slows everything down. I literally feel like you space bend and you know you bend space and time when you're going super fast. I Take did a corner yeah. at 90 miles an hour, like it's on a rail. Boom. And the, and the trees are just passing by you. It's like <laughs> and then what changes is when it stops going by fast. Like the slow-mo in the movies you see. Uh... Like X-Men, the guy runs around and like dings down bullets and stuff. There's a state. I just love that. I live for that. That's just great. I, I did some mountain biking in Arizona. Yeah. And it was in uh, Sedona. And it, it was place. fantastic. It's a great time. Hot as Hades. Beautiful place. My wife and I went there for our anniversary. Had a good time. 114 <laughs> degrees hiking up that hill, though. I don't care how your AC is working, by the way. It, it, it's, it's hot. hot. It's, and it's, it's, a, oh, it's a dry heat. It's, it's a dry heat. It's a dry heat. You know, yeah, but it's pulling the skin off your, your arm. That's for uh -huh. dog sure. That's for sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, right now, my buddy that got me into uh, pipe fitting, you know, his family is just multiple generations. He just left there, and he proved it does get cold. There's snow there right now. Yeah, so it does. it does get cold. It does. It does. It's snowing there right now. He was yeah. there, and he was covered in snow. <laughs> and it's beautiful too. Yeah. Okay, because we also go down the road of food because I'm all about food. I enjoy food. I always highlight industrial approved food. I love bacon. I love all of that stuff. What's your favorite food? Oh, favorite. See, favorite. when you throw out that word, it changes a lot fast because as a guy from Chicago, I buy off of tasteofchicago.com. They'll send me Luminati's deep dish pizza on dry ice so I can get it like Old school Midwestern uh, stuff. My my nice. my name's Miller. My I'm the third. Well, Theodore Miller Sr. was originally Marushak, and if you're from you know Michigan, Wisconsin, Indiana, Illinois, you might have been brought up eating a Marushak sausage. That's my family name, and so uh, a lot of dead animal carcass. But now I eat more like a rabbit. So you saw me on the last time we had a quick yeah. little chat. I was sucking down green drinks, juice <laughs> drinks. So uh, I went from deep dish pizza to. Uh, trying to find the healthiest version of stuff because yeah. you're a stout guy. I didn't notice that last time we spoke. Holy moly. That's What's bling, that? baby. That's bling. I took third place in a bodybuilding contest right there. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I did not notice that last time. I <laughs> Whoa, whoa. I, I competed. I was at physique, and, and uh, I competed against uh, – I'm walking up, and it's old, man. Come on. I'm, I'm an old man. Yeah. So I'm walking up, and I've got my, quote, competition in front of me. And I said, well, gosh, how much do you weigh? And they said, well, we're roughly about 165-ish. And I said, Ish. I, I weighed 165 was when I was in fifth grade. There is no way. It took me forever yeah. to get down to 200. <laughs> so my 13-year-old's anyway. my, my 190 pounds right now with uh, size 13 feet. So he's, I'm, I'm only 6'2 something. He's uh, the local Oregon Science Industry Museum did this thing to measure his feet, his weight when he was young. 
and they all come out with sizes. And I'm driving the car with all the kids in the back, and they're telling me how tall they're going to be. And out comes his at six seven. He's and six so seven. That, well, that's what they said he'll be. I don't know. He's thirteen. Oh. He's he's six foot now. So I don't know how tall he'll be. I'm telling you, in the Pacific Everyone Northwest, always asks. the Pacific Northwest, they grow him big. <laughs> they grow him big, and I'm I, I'm not kidding you. I did a terminal up there. I did a bulk liquid terminal up there, and. Uh, Two of the individuals that I was working with were seven feet. Yeah. Crazy. Great guys, but seven feet. And I'm, I'm like, I only know one person six foot seven right now. So if he's that tall, he'll be the second person I know intimately at <laughs> six, seven. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's get going. Let's talk a little bit about who you are, what you are, outside of the fact that you like speed and outside of the fact that you uh, used to eat well and now you're eating stuff that you don't like to eat. So <laughs> let's talk a little bit about your background and why we're on this uh, journey to talk a little bit about you because I'm passionate about what your message is going to be delivering to the market. And that is how to increase, once again, sales, market, branding, all of the stuff that always. in the industrial space uh, always need help with. So give us a little background, a full well, one on who you are. The sexy topic is always getting more new clients. That's what people want to know about. So, you know, they ask, what do you do? They want to know that we help entrepreneurs learn how to double their size of their company in 12 month period of time. They're always looking at fast growth strategies. So that's what people want. And so when they go, what are you known for? They look at what they want and then there's what they need. I mean, I don't know about you, but I was on the job site at the age of nine and uh, I would be sitting down at the table again, dead carcass hit the table, just a bunch of men just shredding at it. And then as soon as the truck rolled up, so we were doing concrete. So the truck had concrete forms on there. You had to stop eating and go unload. And that was just a really interesting conundrum to me. I was like, all right. So I'm like, when I, you know, when I go out, and I grow up and I have my business, I'm never going to have to stop eating my meal. I'm going to have someone unload that damn truck for me. I want to have the business run more without me, right. grow more without me instead of the way that was being done. So I had all these seeded little things in my mind and success without fulfillment. That's the ultimate failure. And so they come to me about wanting more revenue and I give them what they want. The truth is, you know, they want more time home with their family. My buddy just now started his band. He's a musician his whole life. So he's looking at 50. He's just now in a band. Why? He stopped being on the road. The pipe fitter came home, started a little business locally. Now he can finally strum the guitar. That's his passion. And so uh, just so I'm going to interrupt real quick. And that's the fulfillment part of what you're talking about. Well, that I mean, it's, it's, the fulfillment's different for each human. But that comes on the back half of whatever they call freedom. The freedom to do what yeah. you want, when you want, how you want, and with who you want. So each person has a different map of what that fulfillment's going to look like. Yet the success is a consistent pattern, which is usually built on the back half of discipline. Because if you don't have the discipline to do the things you need to do to set you up for true freedom, either cash flow or time, whatever it may be, then, then you're going to somewhere lie to yourself and say the money's going to make up for the lack of time with the wife or the kid. And you end up like me in front of 2,000 people. I was blessed. My uh, senior partner at the time, Tony Robbins, is interviewing me in front of 2,000 people about this woman who is talking about an exit strategy out of her marriage, like a business. Like, you know, if I had to get divorced, do I have to live in the same state for shared custody? Well, she was two rows in front of me, seven seats to the right. That was my wife. So we spent the next two hours in front of 2,000 people as an example of what not to do as well as what to do, but mostly it was what not to do. And so that kind of pain, it, it, it caught me brilliantly right up in the middle right here. You know, three yes. years of doubling right. sales in a row, right. I realized that's not the cure to all things. So I commit to helping my clients get what they really want. So they come for what they want and then I get them what they really want. And then we have a lot of fun together for a long time. So uh, what I try to focus on here at Industrial Talk, you know, there's two components and, and there's the, the professional industrial individual who has a desire to learn, grow, consume information to sort of climb that proverbial corporate ladder. I, that's their track. Yeah. There's the other component <clears throat> And it consists of companies that fall into that. And they might, they might be companies, industrial companies that support bigger in com uh, industrial companies, the Chevrons of the world, and we support them. Both, yeah. and what I find, both are very interested in how do, I, how do I succeed? And then the companies, how do I grow? How do I go beyond that? Because right now, what you're talking about, uh, Ted, is near and dear to my heart, and I hear what you're saying. So if I was a CEO, what, what, what are the problems I'm dealing with today? 
Well, I mean, we we know everyone's going to say the cash flow. I want some kind of revenue based on where their business life cycle is at. But right now in the current marketplace in 2019, so if they're listening to this in 10 years, I just want to speak to the place in time we're at. <laughs> it's on the internet. Good, so good advice, <laughs> right? It will be. So good <laughs> advice is contextual. So we're at 3% unemployment rate. So CEOs are caring more about how do I maintain fulfillment, this soft language, the stuff that we never talked about on the job site. I learned how to say the F word and I put it before and after anything I really freaking meant. And that's how people had to listen to a kid. Cause right. You know, right. when you start going into positions of authority and you're way younger, half the age of everyone, you know, right. I was just that freak. Like I had an entrepreneur personality type. I was constantly chasing down to learn how to grow and grow. So I just said F-bomb a lot and built big muscles like you back in the day and physically intimidate. That's not what you want. Come oh, on, hey, you man. just slap me. I mean, yeah, the, no, I'm just kidding you. <laughs> we, 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 want, we know the CEO is looking to have their staff members be fulfilled because it's going to mitigate the turnover rate. And we can talk about that a little later. I promise all the case studies and how we've mitigated turnover, how we've brought this soft, cheesy, what we used to even make fun of on the job site. Like just the idea of even caring about how someone felt, it was just, it's really, it was just really interesting. I had no clue why we always did it that way. I just knew that what a shame that, because it was my uncle owned the company. That it really hurt my soul because he was such a heart centered man. He really wanted to do the right thing, but he was a dick at times. Can we say that on this show? You just like, did. It's okay. Oh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to edit know. it out. Let's put it that way. Now, it the, now that you, we've all identified that you did. <laughs> Normally you I, just, I just, I, well, I just, on my show, it's just like full fledged, <laughs> like whatever says is said Dang. coming out. So I don't know. So good, he could be that extremist at time. And I, at times the whole company, everyone just wanted to leave it. They're just waiting for a better opportunity. And if you create that environment, what a shame. Um, so CEOs now, I think if they're self-aware, they're focused on how to mitigate the turnover but yet, if you can't have the lifeblood, which is new business, that's usually my uh, solopreneur, Army of One. The, guy, the guy's got his own truck. And like, and now, if he got hit by a bus on that truck, there is no business tomorrow. So, right. But he owns a business, and that's self-employment. And that guy, though, they're always looking at the cash flow management when you got new businesses. So it's good advice is contextual. Those are two hot topics I see often. Let me ask you this, that, that, uh, solopreneur or that small business, um, I've been, I've been focused in and doing some reading on legacy, right. And leaving a legacy. And, and I've had individuals come to me specifically within the industrial market saying, Hey Scott, I'm, I'm interested in possibly selling or doing, you know, moving. The reality is, is that, um, the business is them. And once they go away, I don't what care about it. It is them. And I said, yeah, it is. And that's the way the industrial world is sort of geared in a lot of ways. Is well, it, it's, I, it's I was them. blessed. I was blessed because not just myself, my best mate growing up, his, his family had a legacy of pipe fitting. So we were concrete, my family, he's on a pipe fitter. Here's, I found a picture for you. This is uh, me here uh, being as a, a helper here, uh, grinding out. <laughs> yeah. You know? hey, if you're out on the YouTube channel, that's him with a, uh, with a uh, protective mask on. And here's me, just so that you see this. That's me, baby. I'm getting on a uh, boom, getting ready to go up a 100-foot uh, pole right there. Lineman. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Look at you. Were you a yeah, linesman? Also, what were you doing? I was. I was a journeyman yeah. lineman. I ran crews and up the poles in, in, in South Central L.A. Oh, okay. So you, you're doing that. I'm doing that. Yet yeah. I had a perspective to where yeah. I saw their family wanting to have a legacy. Yeah. So they had emotional vested interest to want to pass down intellectual property. It was locked in between their ears mm -hmm. to their one boy. That's how it went just to their son. Right. And that's the oldest story told since the beginning of time. Yeah. And yet I was like, why are you only giving it to that one boy? You know, one, you got multiple kids. Uh, two, you know, that means you created a linchpin. All that means is one guy's overwhelmed, str stressed out, pissed off, frustrated, overwhelmed with given situation. And then what do they do? I need a right-hand man, you know? So what are they going to do? I'm going to go to my boy or whoever that's going to be. I'm going to teach him everything I know, and I'm going to take all my stress and put them on their shoulders. That's and then right. I wonder why it's not succeeding as well as it could be Michael Gerber changed my life, 
20 plus years ago with E-Myth, Entrepreneur Myth. Yeah, the, I, I read the book. You need to work on it, not in it. Just that's, I don't, I hate citing a whole book in a sentence. Yet, if I were going to, I would say the need to work on it, not in it, is the biggest breakthrough I got from Michael, transformed my world because I always knew that to be true, is that we never really powwowed how to improve the process of putting up concrete forms. I had a process no one learned unless they chose to ask me to teach them and I was more efficient than any human being. Shoot, bam, boom. We had a, I had a pinning process that no one else followed. But mm. I'd put it up twice as fast. I'd tear it down twice as fast. And they all just looked at me saying, he's more energetic. He's more committed. He's more of this. And that's a bunch of BS. It was a process. It is and a process. no one wanted to teach it. And what Absolutely. a shame. So if they're stuck like that, here's the reality. They're only going to have a job and they're going to die and let their business die off unless they have some kind of internal driving force, some kind of power willpower it's trying to be expressed that wants a legacy they true maybe it's just i need a nest egg and i'm forced to finally let this business run more without me and i'm forced to build better policies and procedures because i gotta sell this damn thing and no one's gonna buy it when i own the business because i am the thing that they're buying yep. which means they're only going to do it if you're signed a contract be employed for the next five years yep ted we're going to take a break right now this is ted miller he is ceo of training mastery three and we're going to get into some tangible uh, solutions. He likes speed. He used to eat well. Now he eats green stuff. And uh, we're talking about those problems that can be solved. And we're going to be uh, developing those tactics for Legacy and his solutions. So thank you very much for joining the Industrial Talk Podcast. We will be right back. You're listening to the Industrial Talk Podcast Network. All right, the Industrial Talk Podcast has a new sponsor by the name of ASG Energy. Now, this company helps private companies as well as public organizations of all sizes reduce energy costs through the use of commercial LED lighting technology and electrical services. Now, you know me. I'm, I'm a big fan of LED just because, well, first off, I don't have to change the lights, but at a, on a commercial basis, oh my gosh, the energy savings is phenomenal. The reduction in maintenance costs, phenomenal. Return on investment, quick, it's, ex, it's, it's incredible. And the environmental benefits, self-explanatory. So, you have any questions about LED commercial lighting, you need to check out my friends at ASGEnergyLLC.com. Find out more because... They know what they're doing, so check them out. All right, welcome to the Industrial Talk Podcast. Welcome back. This is Scott McKenzie, and you know who I'm talking to? I'm talking to Ted Miller. He is CEO, Training Mastery 3, which is pretty cool. I got to ask the three part. What is that? Well, I mean, uh, it really was about exponential growth. In my mind, once I really learned how to grow companies quicker, faster, and easier, smarter, it was really built on the fact that if you do a little improvement here, a little improvement there, and a little improvement there, it doesn't have a, an additional effect. It's an exponential rate of return. So, uh, and plus, I just happen to be Ted Miller third. So next, you know, three is everywhere. It's my number. My son laughs at me. We sit at a table. It's going to be in increments of three. He hates me for pointing it out everywhere we go. So it's a fun <laughs> little thing in life. All right. Let's start uh, dropping some uh, success bombs here because me as a, a, sure. a, a, a being a part of the industrial market and, and being intimately engaged with the professionals of the industry and companies of industry, I know exactly what they're trying to, you know, they're challenged with. And that is always sales. Sure. Great. Uh, building that market. What's that brand look like? All of the okay. stuff that everybody is, because we want to, we want to leave a legacy and we, we're not, we're very reactive when it comes to it. dig another ditch. I dig yeah. another ditch, things like that. So what can you yeah. help our listeners sort of realize as we start to develop, develop these success bombs? Boom. Talk to us. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. So, well, let's, let's decide which one we're going to talk about first. Uh, the hundred million dollar race, make, cracking the hundred million dollar code, or your first million. Which one should I start first with? First million. Let's let's keep. Okay, it well, let's do the first million. Let's do. So, let's do. I'll bring it home. I'll get close. So, my dearest friend in life. So, there's Chris. I had mentioned my dearest friend's my cousin, John. John. He was the guy I was on the job site at Day Nine with, and so he goes becomes an architect. So he's in the space where he needs to sell himself as an architect. And so, how can he have this run more without him? How can it grow more without him? You need to get a, a message, meaning 
how do you communicate what you do and how you do it? Most, first of all, suck at that. Hi, I'm A. If you say I'm A, you're talking about you and no one gives a shit about you. Nobody. So let's nobody. get clear right now. Nobody. If you, if you think you're marketing, you better not be talking about yourself because that's a guaranteed way to turn everyone off. So uh, that's where I'm a big advocate of. Let's talk about them, their given situation, their challenges they're facing. Let's fundamentally stop talking about you, start talking about them, and hopefully commit to solving maybe a challenge that they're aware of that they have. And in the best case scenario, use education to set the buying criteria. Here, let me explain what I mean. So John Burt, he's out on the job sites. He's selling architectural stuff. What happens? 2006, seven build up. Hell's going to hand basket and everything's commoditized and no one's wanting to buy much of anything in that environment. So I talked to him. I go, okay, what's your USP? So USP, unique selling proposition or uh, uh, ultimate strategic position, however you want to see that acronym. For him, he spent a lifetime like me on the job site and what he's noticed in the architectural environment is architects have never been on the job. They've never wielded the hammer. They never built a thing. They don't have scars in the back of the hands like you and I have. So they don't have a comprehension of, of from A to Z, how it's all gonna come together. So they over design, which costs the contractor more money. And at the end of the day, by the time they're bringing an architect in, all they're looking for is how can you reduce my expense? Because all they care about is the P&L. So that's his major USP. I go, great. Stop talking about you. No one gives a shit about you and your architectural background. What they really care about is them and their conundrum. So you must educate them on the fact that every other architect is going to overbuild, overdesign everything. And that's how you're going to help them with the thing they care, yeah. care about the most, profit increase. So that all is, the, what's the premise? You're willing to educate a prospective audience on the reasons why they must buy. I'll say it like this, setting the buying criteria into your favor. Whatever unique selling proposition is, instead of saying, hi, my name is, is why you should work for me. I'm unique, you know? That's a salesman, you come across like commission breath, and you're all uncomfortable doing that anyhow. I haven't met a guy that really feels very comfortable braggadociously talking about themselves, except those guys that do that, and no one buy, does business with them anyhow. So the reality is, care about the other uh, pr prospect, your future client, enough to educate them. Five biggest mistakes you're making in your design build process. What these five things are, and the single thing you must know now that's gonna radically transform your profitability in 2019. Now I made that shit up, Scott, but I will tell you that, mm -hmm. I mean, that's just an absolute thing that's gonna be a make it or break it deal when you're approaching a marketplace to cut through the clutter because there's so much noise out there. You feel but me it, on this? It's, it's not just the noise. It's it's how you simplify the message that benefits them. And you yeah. don't. I don't have to sit there and consume intellectual calories to try to decipher what you're trying to tell me. Tell me what it is. I don't have time. Yeah. Let's do it. Boom. Yes. So true. So true. You mentioned, we were talking about legacy earlier. And uh, before we hit live and we went live with the show you'd mentioned you didn't know my partner chet holmes passed away mm -hmm. so i've been with him for a decade and you were saying hey i listen to your sears satellite radio ads that's a great yeah. example of taking your message unifying it to where it could be said in a 60 second soundbite that you know who he is it builds a legacy he's been dead seven years yeah. and you didn't even know that and you're mm -hmm. a fan of his intellectual property yeah. And that's what we're talking about. Building a legacy is knowing how to share a message yeah. that anyone else can reiterate to where you, it, dead or alive, you're speaking to the power that a human being's left on this planet. Right, right. I, I love it. Now, now you said five, five things. Yes. Designed, so, let's start with one. Well, let's go through, uh, so A, setting the buying criteria. So I'm gonna reiterate it. So what right. does that mean? In John's case, over design. In Chris, the welder, he's sick and tired of being on the road. His kids are growing up. I'm not saying he had an oops. I didn't ask him if he had an oops, but I just noticed the age between his two kids and his third kid is pretty big. So uh, if you have, you got two kids, right? Uh, Scott and Molly? Yeah. They're close in age, right? So yes, like, I have Tafton and Remy, but a lot of us have that third one. So that, <laughs> that's where the, oh my gosh, I want to be around. I, maybe I shouldn't be on the road. So he was talking to me 
I went in for a funeral or a wedding or whatever you do to go to your home state. And we're chatting at a bar about his business. And for him, as a pipe fitter, he's doing consulting to government. So now he's selling B to G. Ugh. He wants to move into governmental situations. And, and a lot of people struggle knowing how to sell the government. And I go, come along and I go, great, you're going to kick everyone's ass. And here's right. why. You're going to be the one guy that goes in and educates them how to mitigate the biggest ex- challenge they have. And they go, human capital. They don't know how to manage bodies. The biggest expense is a human being per hour. And they don't know how to manage it because they don't understand the workflow like him his father and his brothers, they were all, they had a stick in their hand. They were welding. I mean, he had his head tilted on the side doing a puddle from yeah. the, the time he could hold the damn stick, he was welding. So yeah. he's seen it being applied so many different ways. He comes in and I go, great, just educate them on here's what you must understand when you go to make a decision, know these things. So no one's educating them. So here's what happens at a governmental level. What the, you can't bribe anybody. You can't do anything. You can't even do a gift. You can't even buy them a bag of coffee because that'll feel like you're trying to manipulate a sales process. Yep, yep. So instead, he offers education, which is totally accessible at a B2G play, business to government. And suddenly, everyone's hiring him, his firm, because he was the one that took the time to educate them on things they didn't know of. How to better manage human capital, people, bodies, the largest expense in every company in this industrial space is people and their time period so he cut through the clutter because he found how, a way to communicate that message so you feeling me on that it's, it's if you really I, I look it. at your unique selling proposition learn how to communicate it in a form of an education that is a that the intention matters motive matters and so when your motive is to serve a, a human being it elevates their awareness they have new information to make a better educated decision now they're more likely to buy from you. See, that's interesting because we, we don't get into that, and, and that's rare. And I and I want to make sure that we understand know, this is really education based marketing. Education. It's, it's rare because we have martyrdom stamped on our forehead, thinking we have to work harder in the blue collar space. Working harder is solution to everything. But when you're hitting that wall again and again and again, and you're not getting process progress, even though my friend his whole sentiment in the book was pig headed discipline, pig headed discipline. But there's a time where your pig headed behavior up up against brick wall is not going to serve. Have enough self awareness to recognize that if you want something new than what you're getting now, approach the market in a unique way. And it's okay that no one's doing it, but you, you will take market share like candy from a baby. Yeah. That's a uh, blue ocean uh, principle. You're, if you're in, in what I find, I find in the industrial world, we, we, we all fish in that red ocean. Everybody's just clawing and grabbing yeah. at and they're, we're doing the same thing over and over expecting different Bloody, results buddy, fighting. And, just and, you're commoditized. It is. and and yet there's this information out there that doesn't we're still yeah. somewhat in a very old-fashioned way we believe that that's intellectual capital and we're going to hold on to it but the reality is is that there's a component that you've got to share to demonstrate that ability to be able to say, you know, he knows what he's talking about. She if you knows. tell people your secret sauce, no one's going to do it anyhow. That's what I've learned. That is the Whatever really. you think your USP is, I mean, re- really, yes. if it is not patentable process, if you can't patent it, the reality is most don't have the discipline to do it the way you do it that makes it so special. So no one's going to steal. It's not like a bunch of old ladies hoarding their recipes. I don't want to give it out. Reality is most people aren't willing to follow that particular recipe. It's just the lack of discipline to yeah. follow your process. Frankly, if you're willing to follow processes, this business would be running more without you. So I'll talk about the $100 million leap in a minute. Yeah, so, just one second. I want to make sure that everybody that is listening out there, I'm telling you right now, he speaks truth when it comes to that. When you have some information that you can share and you can share openly I guarantee you, the percentage of that individual that's going to go out there and say, all right, man, I've got the secret sauce and I'm going to do it myself, does not happen. They're looking for solutions and you're bringing them solutions through that educational platform. Yeah. You know, I've got a video on that. Uh, Back when he was alive and I was partnering with uh, Tony Robbins, he's the uh, big personal growth guru. It came out with Netflix two years ago. I'm not your guru. 
Uh, I've got a video on that I can get, uh, share with the followers and then I can get them a chapter of Chet's book. It's uh, the copyright is from Penguin, third largest publisher on the planet. But we have permission to share chapter four for free. I'll gift that. And that's not my IP. It doesn't sell any of my stuff. It's just a way to contribute. Uh, I'll make sure everyone gets an access. So to what that. I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I have a landing page for you. And when we do uh, fire that out, we'll have that. I might that even ability. make it easier than that. Like, you know, just direct message, email. We'll, we'll, sure. Yeah. We'll do something to make we'll it make, super easy. We'll make sure that people get access to that. Yeah, yeah. I don't want them to feel like, hey, like leave your name and email address so I can tell you this other thing later. Nah. Like, if it's going to serve them, this is a legacy. I can't, I, I carry that uh, legacy on. Uh, it's, I, I, I'm very proud of that. I'm, you know, Chet said, Ted, no one understands this philosophy and this strategy better than you other than me. And he goes, and I'm the author of it. He goes, but no one trains on it better than you, including me. So that was a great compliment to get from my late great friend. Um, and we were talking about hundred million dollar leap. So let's talk to the CEO that wants to use the same yeah. philosophy. How do I get my messaging unified? Maybe if you're in a larger company, you have many salespeople. Well, if I talk to each salesperson, are they even saying the same thing? If I look at your marketing materials, does it say the same thing your salespeople are saying, let alone your uh, uh, research? Everyone says so many different things in different ways, and they wonder why they suck in sales and marketing. So if you want to get more it's new clients, noisy. unify it. It's but real we, noisy. It's really noisy. So how do you get it unified? So there's this guy. Um, I, 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 he, he's given us testimonials I can talk about. It. So Jim, Simon Roofing, when back then they were at like $50 million in revenue. And so he sells roofing to large organizations, uh, Kmarts, the Walmarts, the anywhere there's large square footage, Costco's, they have large square footage of a roof. That's their people. They're, they're going to make way more money on those large companies and small roofs all over the place. So, uh, but their problem was, they had a human being that managed the facility. And you can't sell that guy anything because he doesn't own the checkbook. So how do you get to the decision maker? Was, we saw that as simple using this concept of education-based marketing. I said, talk in a way that's guaranteed to get the attention of who you need to speak to. They're like, well, talking to roof, CEOs don't want to hear about a roof. I go, well, what do CEOs want to hear about? Well, they want to talk about profits. Great. What's haunting them that they don't know of? And then they did some research. Here's what they found out. People are going through lawsuits like crazy about negative effects from a roof. Most people don't know. Most damage, 40 plus percentage of a damage to a building has been directly tied to a leaking roof. They had this thing called sick building syndrome. When things get wet and starts growing mold and we're inhaling it and we're wondering why our employees are getting sick left and right. They had $11 million remediation, meaning someone's suing their ass and the settle cost them $11 million. You think you can get a CEO's attention if you're saying that one of the most rising trends in your space is you getting sued? So I know you want me to go off and talk to Mr. Um, property management guy, whatever, but is he managing your litigations? No, that's something me and my attorney deal with. That's why this is an executive briefing designed just for you, Mr. and Mrs. CEO. But by all means, have your facilities manager there. And when we cover our intellectual property, I'm sure they're going to nod their head and agree with everything we have to say. Do you see how strategic that is, Scott, that you have a way that guarantees you're going to have to talk to a decision maker instead of wasting your energies and time befriending someone that's never going to buy your product and service? I got to tell you, man, we're, we're, the, the time is passing. I, I, you, you indicated that you had some sort of stats. Yeah. Can you share a stat before we take a break? A stat, well, I could share a stat from this particular client that I think was interesting. Yes. Uh, because... Market data, when positioned appropriately, can set the buying criteria in your favor. So instead of it trying to be like, my, I've been in this space for 40 years, cite the data from a third party expert and it'll be heard as if it's the word of God. Mm -hmm. I want to repeat that. When you say shit, people resist what you have to say. Oh, That's freeze, fight, flight. Yeah. The second you say, I read somewhere, according to cite that respected industry expert and suddenly it's as if the word of God. Over 90% of all roofs do not qualify their manufacturer's long-term warranty. That's just a little piece of data. Now I can cite where that came from and what, but that grabs someone's attention because they go, hey, I am feel protected by this roof because there's a warranty. Oh, well, great. Did you know that uh, in your warranty, manufacturer's warranty, it says things called like wind, hail, and rain can mitigate their warranty. 
This is not BS, by the way. This is in the fine print no one ever reads. Right. So they thought they were protected from their, the manufacturer that made the uh, whatever went on the roof. But reality is 90% of all those roofs don't qualify for uh, a, a warranty. So find a way to use data. It can help set the buying criteria in your favor. And maybe, in this case, preempt your competition where they want to work with you and no one else. Okay, we're going to have to take a break. I've got, I've got three things that are going to be standing out. You guys have to consider, new listeners out there, we're talking uh, education-based maintenance. I mean, let's see. <laughs> That's, oh my that's gosh. All good. And it's good if you can marketing. Oh my gosh. I can't believe it. So that's one education based marketing. One. Yeah. Nobody's going to steal your secret sauce. They're just not going to. And I but guarantee you don't even have to really lead on the secret sauce. Educate for the need of your sauce. Educate. John was educating on the need to stop over designing. He didn't talk about his IP that understands how to not to over design. He had to educate around the need. To not over design. That's how you don't give away your secret sauce. And third party or uh, data that supports your position, but from a third party. Amen to that. That's pretty doggone powerful and painless. I got to tell you, painless. You've got the World Wide Web out there, and I think I can probably find data out there that can support your position. So, yes, we're gonna we're gonna um, talk about how people can get a hold of you there, Ted. Uh, we're talking to Ted Miller. Okay. And, yeah. So. Uh, Podcasts are a great way. We're going to wrap, oh. wrap it up here. I got to okay. take a break. So thank you very much for joining the Industrial Talk podcast. We will be right back. Hey, once again, this is Scott McKenzie with Industrial Talk. If you like what you're listening to, please feel free to sign up for the free podcast as well as the blogs. I'll try to keep it all relevant to your business and uh, hopefully be able to provide some insight into what we do at Industrial Talk and what you do as a professional. Hope to see you soon. Thank you. All right. Welcome back, you Industrial Talk listeners. We are talking to Ted Miller. He is dropping some real value bombs right now. And, and uh, for me, I'm excited. I can talk about this all day there, Ted. I know you can't. Uh, I'm not sure if everybody has all that time. But I got to tell you, one of the things that has always been as a uh, former president of a, a large company that I took public, I was always uh, focused on, you know, revenue bringing in more revenue, expanding that market, looking for acquisitions, whatever it might be, and of course, branding. And um, I, I am very, very intrigued with uh, the what you're talking about. And I think it's very needed within the industrial space. Before we have to jump off, because we're going to be talking about how people get in contact with you. And of course, I'm going to have a landing page specifically for that, and then we'll push it on out. Oh, and perfect. It's, it's all perfect. Good. But what is that parting shot? What what do people in the industrial world need to just consider and and need to think about? And I'll I'll tell you one thing. I know for a fact that we here in the industrial market we we don't like to fail. We don't we're we're we're, we're not un, we're uncomfortable to change, and so we're very reluctant yeah. to do certain things. Give us a parting shot that that makes sense. Well, I mean it's trite, but I think trite statements are true. The need to work on it, not in it. I mean, finding a space in a time where you're not getting blown up on your phone, on your text, on whatever, if email cuts through the clutter and grabs your world or employees go, hey, do you got a minute? Find a safe environment where you can stop and truly look at the single most important thing in your company and give it the time it deserves. Because I'll tell you this, if you don't give enough attention to what deserves your attention, it ultimately would take more attention away than it deserves. I think it was uh, David Allen getting things done. But I got to tell you, uh, maybe this will be another show. Uh, the the reality is, how do you start start that? What what is like? Do you schedule you know? it. It's simple. That's easy. I mean, just like you working out. I I man of rituals. You probably are have it at the same time, same day, just to make sure you freaking do it. It's a ritualistic nature. So <laughs> if you don't make it a ritual, that's an expression of discipline because right. these disciplines set you free. That's the irony of this whole gig. If you're willing to be disciplined. That's how you get your freedom, my friend. Freedom is found on the back half of what you're willing to do privately. You'll then get rewarded publicly in a form of revenue, time, or whatever it may be that you really desire. Well, I know That's I'm going to go out there and I'm going to, I, I know the influential book that you were talking about, The Ultimate Sales, uh, sales Machine from, uh, by Chet Holmes. I'm going to yeah. go out and get that. Is that on a, like an ebook type of thing too? Oh, yeah, man. That book is a mega, mega New York Times bestseller. I got a whole box of it here, brother. I'll just mail it to you. Uh, just uh, text me uh, your physical address. I'll mail one off to you. But yeah, Amazon. Great place to go get it, man. I love it. Amazon, you know. they, do, they got a really good Audible on it, too. 
you know, whatever. It's I out there in a million it. ways. Uh, in that little page that you put up, we'll put up yeah. that chapter four for them. I love them. it. I love They're it. Free. And see, what's interesting, you guys, are, you listeners out there, this is important stuff. And I mean, there are ways of being able to impact your professional career as well as your company. And, and you can do it. We, here in the industrial world, we start getting into those. We, this is how we do it. We've been doing it for X amount of years. And I'm telling you right now, that, yeah. that, that's got to stop. We've got to think differently. You agree? Ted, how do they get a hold of you? I know that you got a bunch of social platforms out there. Talk to them. Yeah, I mean, well, if, if, since we're on a podcast, yeah. uh, if they like podcasts, well, they go to their iTunes account, however they follow people yep. on podcasts, Business Breakthroughs with Ted Miller III. That's an easy one. And then, yes. um, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, LinkedIn, that's great. You know, the uh, it's uh, you know, emails. I'll, I'll tell you easy. one thing. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Fun. I'm going to tell you something real quick. You know what makes your name so cool? Is because you've got three. <laughs> Ted Miller is a common name, right? If you go yeah. out to LinkedIn, Ted Miller, ugh, is that the Ted Miller? No, but when you start slapping in the three, your name pops up and that's with it, Facebook. It's actually, that's, it's an it's easy good. way everywhere. The it TM3, is. Ted Miller three. And I had to turn into a digital three. I mean, an actual num numeric number three because I was doing III, but that's Ted miller -y, and uh, that just didn't <laughs> function. So somewhere along the line, the digit three popped in there and, it's, it's been easy. I'm telling to find. you, you're easy to find out there. And, and Miller3.com. I mean, it's, that's pretty easy. That's just a great way to find all my stuff. Websites anymore, right? TedMiller3.com. Fantastic. Yeah. Ted, I can talk all day and I guarantee you everybody else would love to be able to listen to it. We just don't have the time and we don't have the bandwidth, my friend. So it's thank you very time. much. I appreciate you turning this around. I'm telling you guys, this is a man of action. You've got to get out there. You've got to get on his website. You've got to take advantage of his wisdom because he's going to change your life, your professional career, as well as your company. He's got the insight. So don't hesitate. I'm telling you right now, I'm a better person because of this conversation and my hmm, new relationship with our friend here, Ted Miller. So go out there, find it, okay? Ted, thank you very much. Hey, you man, are awesome. Scott. I enjoyed this immensely. So everybody out there, Stay tuned. I'm going to give you some more information on how to get in contact with him and all the other plans. So uh, bear with me. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Industrial Talk Podcast Network. All right. I like that a lot. Thank you very much, Ted Miller. For being on the Industrial Talk podcast, I, I, this stuff that you talk about, this information is just, it, it just gets me so stoked. I, I guess I could say stoked. You're the man. You're the man. Thank you very much, uh, Ted. Thank you very much for sharing your wisdom and knowledge. Okay, you listeners out there, you need to get a hold of Ted Miller. He's talked about it. It's all out there. He's on Facebook. He's got also a company Facebook. He's got a personal LinkedIn. He's got a company LinkedIn. He's, he's out there all over the place, and I'll have it out there at industrialtalk.com. And uh, I just want you to guys uh, to know, this platform is for you. This Industrial Talk platform is for you, the professional. It is dedicated to you and giving you 100% uh, of my heart and soul so that you are a success. Thank you for joining. Get a hold of me, industrialtalk.com. I will respond because I want to talk to you. If you have any questions, comments, let me know. And thank you. Be safe. And thank you. And, oh, oh, and check out Go Big. Great series. We're excited about it. So thank you very much. Have a great week. We will talk again.